Hi everyone, it's Marcy Denning here from Stampin' with Marcy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in southwestern Ontario, Canada, and I want to welcome you to the uh, May Over the Border with Di and Marcy blog and video hop. This month we are sharing some projects with the Elephant Parade bundle. So this is in the annual catalog. It is the Elephant Parade stamp set and the Elephant Dies. This set is so adorable. I've also paired the uh, fancy frames dies with my card, also available in the annual catalog. So this is the card I'm going to be creating. Oh, it's so sweet. I just love that elephant set. Okay, so let's get started. We are going to turn our cardstock, this is Parakeet Party, we're turning it into a sticker. So I have my adhesive sheets and I am going to carefully line that up right at the edge. When you've got a detailed die like this, it is a good idea to um, use your adhesive sheet so that you're not fussing with the liquid glue. So I'm just lining it up, pressing it on, leaving a little space in between so that it, um, I have little areas where there's a break in the adhesive sheet so that I can easily um, pull the backing off. Okay, so you can see there's my two little lines. So there's my garbage. But first, let's stamp our little adorable elephant. I've already gone ahead and stamped and die cut my three little butterflies. way. So because I am coloring with the moment of uh, the um, Stampin' Blends, I am inking up with Memento ink. There we go. And I have already gone ahead and stamped and colored the butterflies for the insert piece. All right, so we're gonna let this sit for a moment to dry. And we are going to bring in the stamp and cut emboss machine. Get this out of the way with the brand new magnetic plate, which, oh my goodness, how much do I love this? It makes it so that it is so easy to um, die cut now because this is not going anywhere. It is stuck on there, making it so much easier. No more taping everything. So this is available right now in the annual catalog. It doesn't say new because it was released before, but there was quality issues, so Stampin' Up! pulled it. And we've been patiently waiting for it to come back. Okay, so generally speaking, you're going to want to possibly run this through two times if it has not cut all the way through. Always take a look at the back before you pull that um, everything else out so that you're sure that it has cut all the way through those layers. All right. And I am going to, I don't have my brush here handy. So we're just gonna be Poking that out. Come on. And a 
lot of it will stay behind. So you just have to clean that out. And I'm gonna be doing some masking as well. So let's bring that back in. So I'm just poking out all of these bits and pieces. Now, there is a coordinating blog post that goes with this, so it'll have all of your measurements as well as all of the products that I used to create this um, cute card, as well as links to my online store. So if you live in Canada and would like to shop with me, I would truly appreciate it. And all of the links are there handy dandy for you to just um, add whatever it is you want to your shopping cart. All right, almost done pulling all this stuff off. It may have not quite cut through right at that area. Just a few pieces that you have to be careful that you don't rip it. Of course, this last little area here is being fussy. Come on, there we go, there we go. Also in the description box below will be um, the link for Diana's video. So be sure to check that out. All right. So all of my little bits are taken out of there. So next up, we are going to mask off. Um, here we go, Let's bring in my grid paper. We're going to do a bit of um, ink blending. So we're going to lay this. This piece here is the exact same size as the frame. So it is three inches by four and a half inches. Now remember, all of this will be on my blog post that coordinates with this. So what I'm doing is lining this up and I've already got another um, piece that I have gone and put a piece of um, masking paper on it to hold it down in place. So I'm lining this up and I'm putting this right over top so that I can see where it's gonna sit. And now I'm gonna pull this part off and set it aside. Next, I am going to bring in my brand new Stampin' Up! masking paper. And I am going to cut some strips here so that which side is the open one one of these there this side here okay so i am going to cut some of this so that i can ink blend without the worry of the ink getting too far over So let's snip right in the center here. All right. So one side is tacky. And what we're going to do is line this right up against the edge. And Fussing with this one, trying to get it. My video will be long because of this. All right, and this end here. And I'm butting that right up against the edge there. And I'm going to need this a smidge skinnier. So I'm just snipping away. And 
creating that frame so that hopefully I don't go too far over when I'm bringing in that color for the background that my little cutie patootie elephant is sitting on. All right, so then I can easily just pull that off and there I've got my frame. And we're bringing in the parakeet party for the ground for the little elephant sitting on some grass. Get all of that out of my way. So we just want it very light. So picking up some ink and then coming here and adding just a little bit, keeping inside my little area here. All right, I think that's good for the ground that little elephant is sitting on. Way. Now I'm going to bring in my Coastal Cabana. Oh, no, that's supposed to be the wrong, that's the wrong brush. Hold just a moment. I grabbed the wrong blending brush. I've marked my blending brushes. This one here is the Bermuda Bay. This is Coastal Cabana. going to do the exact same thing staying within those lines and I may have gotten a little heavy there but we're okay And this little bit of ink blending just adds a little bit more to your project. If you can just add a little bit here and there to step that project up, it really does make a difference. All right, I think that's probably good because when we do this, it's going to be like that. All right. I think we're good. There's that. Get that out of the way. Let's leave that for a moment. Pull that off carefully as to not rip the paper. We can rip the masking paper, but we don't want to rip our cardstock. And look at that. There's our beautiful frame. Come on. There we go, and there is our beautifully um, colored frame that uh, the elephant is going to sit in. All right, let's move you out of the way and then bring in our blends. So we are going to add 
some petal pink to the toenails. And this is light petal pink to the end of the trunk, the little mouth, some cheekies. She's got some rosy cheeks and the ears. And this is my light petal pink. Then we've got our dark gray granite. And we are gonna go under the chin and the trunk side of the face here and a titch here, a titch here, a little bit on the and those little creases. So cute. I just love this elephant set. It is so adorable. All right. So there's our shadowing, and then we're going to take our light gray granite, and I'm going right over that petal pink because it, you can still tell that it's a little blush colored, but it's not bright in your face. It just mutes it down and it does give you a bit of a tonal difference. Careful around those eyes. Such a cute little face. Going over those cheeks as well, those little rosy cheeks and the tip of the trunk. not doing a ton of shading or anything like that. I just added a little bit. Going over those areas where I did add. And then I'm going to come back in and redo those sweet rosy cheeks, that little mouth, and right there. Just to, it just brightens it up a smidge, that tone. Oh, so cute. So she is now done. So we can bring in our dies that I scooted off to the side. There we go. So this die set has so many, all three of your little elephants, grass, butterflies, peanuts, bows, a balloon, the leaves, so that way you can die cut anything and everything. All right, so we are going to line that up, making sure that we are pretty good there. Cover it and back in the machine. Oh, and I just jiggled it. Come on. There we go. And 
there we've got our cute little elephant all die cut out. So let's bring in our silicone craft sheet. And we are going to pick off all of the backing. Now I could have done this ahead of time, but I wanted to show you in case, whoops, in case you are not familiar with the um, adhesive sheets. So you just have to be careful. You don't rip when you pull off. I like to share how to do things step by step, just in case you are brand new so it doesn't feel overwhelming. I don't like to assume that everybody is a seasoned stamper who knows how to do all the things. Okay. So Diana is in the United States. Um, she's in Arizona. So if you need anything at all, if you're watching this video and you live in the United States, if you need anything at all, you can shop Diana's store. So we have these little bits that are stuck on there from the uh, seams, but it certainly makes it easier. Whoop! Don't rip. Yeah, the seams make it so much easier to pull this stuff off. Oh my goodness. I've got such a mess in here now. And we've got a piece stuck there. Come on, get off there, little guy. There. Okay. So there are cardstock is now a big sticker so we are going to line it up at the top edge to edge come on stick down there we go and Trying to make sure that it's covering that edge of the frame that I, because it's all stretched out of shape. So yes, this can be a little persnickety. However, oh, come on, stick. Um, it is so much easier than putting daubs of glue all over your leaves. And right there. I'm holding my breath as I'm trying to get this on. All right, and I've got just a smidge here at the bottom that I need to snip off. But look at that, so cute, so cute. All right, so I'm just following along the line here because it's kind of out of shape a smidge. So there we go. Now we've got that perfect edge. Give it another nice little press. All right, so I've already embossed my cardstock, my basic white. This is four by five and a quarter. My um, parakeet party is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. My base is 
Um, I'm looking for my bone folder. There it is under my pile. My base is four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. This is the fold I prefer. And I'm holding it, folding and burnishing. All right. I do apologize for the super long video. Lots of steps in today's. All right. And we are going to put some dimensionals. And we're going to center this. On our card front looks about right. Give it a press. And the cutie patootie little elephant, she's going to get some dimensionals as well, but we're going to use the little ones because she is kind of a different shape and I want to make sure that I don't have any saggy bits. Let's add one more just because. So she's going to be sitting towards the bottom. Pull all those backings. And there she goes. She's sitting right there. Oh, she's so cute. Okay, and now our three little butterflies. And these were colored in with the dark Tahitian Tide. And again, these are our little and we are going to put one here. up here and then one at the top so they're just flooding or fluttering around her head one right there and then we need to add our clear wink of Stella to those dots just to make it pop even more The body is light gray granite. All right, we need to finish coloring this guy here. So we're gonna do the exact same. She is gonna get some light parakeet party to sit on. She's sitting on the grass. And the exact same.
tail is straight on dark. And then our light. Trying to color as fast as possible. So I don't lose ya. If you haven't yet, please click that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos from me. I am trying to grow my channel and I truly would appreciate it. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this card. Leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. Nice things, please. And there we go. in with our little cheekies, little mouth, and there we go. So sweet. And before I do the last butterfly here, this butterf the butterflies were all colored the exact same just the dark and then as you let it dry you can come back in and add right on top you're building that color so you're gonna get that um, different tone difference as it's built on top of each other building that color changing it even though it is the exact same color okay now, our insert, and I like to use my liquid glue because if I don't have it down straight, it gives me a moment to move it, get it exactly where it needs to be. Now we just need to stamp our sentiment. What a happy day. That could be anything. And even though this may seem like a juvenile stamp set, I think that it would be perfect for any age. Let's do that over here in case I mess up. Anybody of any age would be happy to receive this sweet card. I am sure I would be happy to receive it. All right, I'm gonna bring in my mini trimmer and I am going to line that up. And angle it just ever so slightly. Trim it down. You could use your scissors or whatever trimmer you have on hand. I'm just eyeballing it to cut that down a bit and I want that just angled ever so slightly more. And I think that's too long, a little too long. There we go. Oh, that's a little too, a little too pointy. 
there. When you start with big, you've got your um, time to be able to adjust. All right, so we are going to do a Fobo with our and I don't seem to have, oh, for goodness sake. All right, so is this gonna work? Yeah. I'm just taking my tape runner and that should be enough on there. Okay, so flip that over bring that in so for a phobo what you're going to do is you're just going to start this way loop it like a figure eight pull that a little longer And then make it as big or as little as you want. So we are just going to pull that so that one gets a little smaller. Pull that so that one gets a little smaller. Adjust so that it's pretty even. And then this avoids that knot. And I can see that's just a titch. I want it just a titch smaller. It avoids the knot causing that big bump. There we go. Whoops. And then you can flip it over and kind of tighten that up. And then we are going to add dimensional. Whoop. Stuck to my finger. One, two, and one over here. We're going to leave that end without because it's going to be hanging off. And you know what? That's a little big, that one loop, so this one here. So all you have to do, because you haven't tied it in a knot, is give it a little tug and that's going to shorten that loop up, making it super easy. And then we are going to have this come over here, get you out of the way, so that it's just over just slightly, making sure that my dimensional is not hanging off here so that it would loop down, stick down to the um, cardstock. And then the final thing, I know, I know it's a long video. Sometimes, you know these things, sometimes it's just going to be that way when you're creating something fabulous. All right, so these are the new Iridescent Pearl Basic Jewels, and we are going to add a bunch of them. We're going to go one, two, and then one, two, and three. They are so beautiful and shiny. Oh my goodness, flying pearls. And then a teeny one. I like to add glue so that my embellishments are not going anywhere. And there we have that epic long video. <laughs> so look at how cute that is. So adorable. And then our inside.
so sweet. Okay, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out. Um, if you're shopping my online store, please use this month's host code. If your order is under $200, please click that um, description box below to get the link for Diana Gibbs um, stamping with a G, stamping with dye, um, to head on over to see what she has created. Don't forget to leave a comment. Thanks, and we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.